with the ever-expanding microbrewery movement in the United States. Guinness has seen its traditional drought drop in market shares in recent years. To reclaim some of this lost revenue, the company has released several new beers into North America. This includes the all-new Guinness Nitro IPA. While traditionally infused with stouts, how does the Nitro IPA hold up against the competition? Find out now on Two Dudes Reviews. Guinness has specifically targeted the American market over the last several years, first producing the Blonde American lot. In hopes of reaching the growing IPA trend in the States, it released its nitrogen-infused India Pale Ale late 2015. But is it worth picking up? Only one way to find out. Alright, hey guys, yeah, we have the Guinness Nitro IPA right here. Um, this is going to be my first um, IPA-infused or IPA beer infused with nitrogen. So, that, looking forward to it. It should be interesting. So, um, let's get this cracking. We'll need to let it sit for a minute after we pour. Now this can is slightly under 12 ounces. It's, a, it's about 11.2. So not quite as large as your normal can of beer. And this started as a brewery project, or a brewer's project for at Guinness. And um, I mean, they won't say it, but I'm pretty sure they did it almost specifically for the American market, simply because of how passionate people are about IPAs in the States. So it just seemed like an obvious choice of, hey, our, our Guinness um, drought essentially created the nitro-infused beer, let's try it with IPAs. Of course now, there are all sorts of other um, nitro-infused beers out there. Uh, Sam Adams recently came out with several that just came out, um, I think beginning of 2016. This one came out, the last quarter of 2015 so we got a little bit jump on the market however there have been some microbreweries around the, the, the United States that have been experimenting with the uh, the nitrogen infused outside of just stouts so that it, that's just something that's kind of caught on a trend that's starting with just trying to infuse really anything with the nitrogen since it gives it the, the creamier head and different texture on the mouth so this beer is still settling. It doesn't have quite the um, just the the beautiful picture of the just the Guinness when it's poured. It doesn't quite have that with the swirls of the the dark beer and the light. It doesn't have that exactly. But it's always fun. So all right, let's uh, let's get tasting and testing this beer. If you haven't checked out any of our uh, our uh, reviews yet, we cut it down into six different categories. It is smell, taste, value for price, drinkability, distinction, and would I buy it again? So now I think the uh, beer has sat the uh, 90 seconds, whatever it's supposed to be for the Guinness. So let's check out this smell. You do get the, the bitterness, the hoppy bitterness of an IPA, but it's, it's almost muted slightly. You have a slight, um, a bit, a little bit of coffee, not, not, not heavy on that. that. That's almost just traces, but the, the, uh, the hoppiness is definitely the main, uh, the main note that you get. Uh, I mean, it's pretty straightforward for the smell. It, it smells fine, so sure, I'll, I'll recommend it for the smell. So, alright, let's go for the taste.
you do get some of the bitterness of, of your IPA, but again, it's muted. It's almost it almost tastes watered down. Um, I mean, that is the the creaminess of the nitrogen. It it soothes it smooths everything out as it hits your tongue. But I, I feel like that is part of the purpose almost of some IPAs. The bitterness is how it interacts with your tongue. It's how your mouth experiences drinking the beer. And that's part, I feel like for me, that's part of the reason to get an IPA is to, to truly experience the bitterness, not just for taste, but in all your sensations and how it feels inside your mouth. This doesn't really have that. It's, I mean, it's different for sure. It's got the, you know, the creaminess, but it's, it's a muted IPA, basically. So if you're someone that really likes IPAs, you know, sure, try it out because it, I mean, it's a nitro IPA. You probably haven't had one of those before, but it's muted. The pretty much everything that you might like about an IPA is kind of bleh, brought down a notch a little bit. So, um, so for taste, it's um, I mean, it's different. It's all right, but I, I'm not going to recommend it on taste simply because when you get for, you when you go for an IPA, you're going for it for partic uh, one particular reason, just about, and this doesn't have it. It's almost I don't even know how to what other beer to categorize it as um, what it's more similar to, but it's just it's a muted IPA basically. So I'm yeah not going to recommend it for taste. Um, all right, number three is value for price. And um, I'm trying to remember how much exactly I paid for it. I wasn't sure about it, so I only bought one. I believe it was, you know, probably about dollar seventy-five, two dollars um, for it. And I mean, I'll, I'll, I think that's a, a fair price if you're comparing it. I mean, if you just want to try something new, a couple bucks isn't that bad. So I mean, just for for value for price, sure, I'll, I'll recommend it for that. Just you know. Just pick up one, test it out for yourself. So, all right, I'll, I'll recommend the value for price. Um, the next category is drinkability. Um, can I drink multiple of these, uh, the Guinness Nitro IPA in a row? And sure, I could. It's because it's the muted IPA, you don't have a problem with drinking the IPAs. I don't know. Some people, they can't drink more than one or two because of the, the bitterness. This doesn't have that. The, the, the creamy head does um, um, make it easier to drink, that's for sure. So, if I mean, if I really felt like it, I don't. <laughs> but if I felt like it, I, I could drink multiple ones pretty easily. And um, that's basically the basis of the drinkability uh, ranking. So, I'm going to have to, I'm gonna have to um, approve it, you know. Recommend it for drinkability. I mean, it's, it's easy to drink. I can drink multiple ones. Um, so yeah, all right. You know, I'll recommend it for drinkability. All right. Uh, category five is distinction. How different is it from other IPAs? And I mean, it is different because it's nitrogen infused. So you have that going for you right off the bat. As for flavor, though, it's. Again, it's just a muted IPA. You can't really get all the other um, complexities out of your IPA that you might with some other brands simply because it's muted. Which is, that's not, for me, that's not what I want with an IPA. Um, because the only, I'm gonna give it a half out of the, the full score simply because it's nitrogen infused and it is different. So it is distinct in that way. I feel like I can't just give it a zero simply because it, they did at least try something different. So, you know, all right, I'll give it a half out of one. And finally, uh, number six is would I buy it again? And straight up, I no, I wouldn't. There's, it's an interesting concept. I'm glad they tried it. I've never had anything other than a stout infused with nitrogen before. So, you know, proud for at least trying it. I don't know if it actually should have been necessary necessarily released I don't think it's going to generate the market value that they Guinness was hoping for with an IPA plus all the extra equipment required to add the widget inside of the can and all the other stuff I just feel like it's it's expensive to do that um, but ultimately no 
I wouldn't buy it again. So um, I believe because of that, I'm giving this a three and a half out of six. It's you know, give it a whirl, try it out. It's different. See, so maybe if if you don't like really like IPAs, if they're just too bitter, maybe you would like this more than I do, just because it you know it's uh, it's kind of held back with the IPA flavor. So yeah. That is my review on the Guinness Nitro IPA. If you've had it before, then let me know in the comments. I'd love to know if you like it or if you just completely hate it. Um, I would say I gave it three and a half out of six. I feel like it's a little high simply because the other categories, it kind of defaults into a higher score almost. Um, so yeah, let me know what you think. Uh, if you want to check out other beer reviews from us, please subscribe. You know, we got more going up all the time and we have just a couple other uh, stations or channels um, or shows I mean um, coming up on the uh, on the uh, channel the uh, YouTube channel as well and uh, check out our podcast at two dudes in a six pack you can find it wherever you get your podcast we're everywhere and um, so yeah for now um, I'm Grayson and for Chris I will see you later